Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Brony from Cambrotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and this is specifically SNG207, Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. So if you have been following along, we have this particular structure we have been following and what we have over here is almost like the chapters of a book. So currently we are on chapter 15 where we'll be discussing Python dictionary. Now, if you have been following along, we started with these Python collections from chapter 12. So we spoke about list, we did tuples and sets, and currently we are on dictionaries. So now let me just collapse this and have a wider view of everything over here. So I have some notes in here and online one. Python dictionary, or a Python dictionary is a collection of key value pair of data. We are going to see exactly what that looks like. Now it is ordered immutable. We are also going to test this just as we did for the other data collections and it does not allow it does not allow duplicate members but i think in the original notes there was um, an issue over here i've done the correction so it does not allow duplicate members so now let's see when we had fruits and i did something like this sorry this curly brackets and printed out fruits and went ahead to print the data type of fruits in this manner and if i'm to save this and i run this we do get this as a dict and here we have dict over here now i made mention of the fact that the moment we start passing in data in here like we have with this empty strange which can be anything then this now turns into a set so then how can we actually get our dictionary so let me just clear this and based on this knowledge let's look at a more practical example so let's say i have a dictionary i'm going to call student info so student underscore info is a variable name and i'll bring in this curly brackets and I'll just press in um, enter to get this space over here so that at least everything looks um, exactly the way I want it to look. So now let's come back to our definition. It's a collection of key value pair. So this is a key and a value and pair of data. So it is almost like the dictionary we have in our libraries or in our homes or, or whatever we have them. Now, every dictionary will have some words and the words will have some definitions. So the key is a word and the definition or whatever information we have over there then becomes the value of it so for student info typical among the things we will have is for instance maybe a name so this name then becomes the key and the value i'm going to have in name is for instance kenneth so now this is a key value pair so if i'm to come in here and for instance print out what i have as student info and I also go ahead to print out the data type of student info. So I'll bring in type and I'll say student info this way. If I run this, we do get the student info printed out over here and this of a class dict. So now there's a key and there's a value. Now see or pay attention to the way we separate this. We separate this with a colon. Now if you want to bring another key value pair, we put in a comma over here and i can say for instance email and then email i'm going to say kenneth at for instance student.com so the key is email and the value we have inside of it is kenneth at student.com now i'll bring in another comma and let's say bring in another um example of a key value pair and i can say h and i'm going to say h is equal to 18 or h column 18 good so now when i save this remember we are still printing student info over here and we are still printing the data type over here and when i run this we do get this whole data structure over here and it is a dictionary as you can see over here so this is the key value pair understanding that we should have till this point now let's look at what we have over here as it is ordered. 
and mutable. Now let's start talking about the order over here. Now in the time pass, if we are dealing with list, the order is based on the index and the same as tuples. But then in the case of set, set is unordered. So there's that kind of randomization in there. Now in the case of dictionaries, the order is by the keys. So now let's go back to some of the things you've already done. First of all, let me just comment what I have over here and show you, at least let's learn from the known to the unknown. We already know that if we have something like this fruit and we declare fruit this way, we did something like mango, we did apple, and finally let's do orange over here. Based on the knowledge we have, we know that based on the indexing, the orange will be index zero, apple will be index one, and orange, as we have over here, will be index two or negative one if we are to use the negative indexing. So I can do something like this. I can do, for instance, fruit and pass in an index over here. And if I decide to print this out, if I decide to print this out, we are definitely going to get mango over here because we are passing the index over here now the point i want to make over here is when it comes to dictionaries let me clear this when it comes to dictionaries the index is by the key so now i can do something like this student info and do a kelly i mean a square bracket over here and now i can pass in and you see i have this lookup help over here i can now pass in name so if I don't want to print everything and I just want to print out the name, that's exactly how I go about this. So when I do this and I run this, I do get Kenneth over here. Now everything is looking good. Now I can also do something like this. And remember we did things like this when we were dealing with, no, especially with list because it was mutable and we we're changing things. So now we've been able to grab the index which is the key. I can now do a mutation over here. And we are saying that dictionaries are mutable. So what it means is I can now change data in here. So instead of Kenneth, I'm going to say John. And now let me just comment this one out. No, let me just actually print this out and print the whole of the student info. Now, when I run this, I do get name and I have John over here. The email is still Kenneth at student because I haven't mutated or I haven't changed anything. And the age is definitely 18 as we have over here. So that also proves the point that it is mutable. So clearly it is ordered by the keys and it is mutable. We can do what we used to do. Now it does not allow duplicate members. And clearly I think this makes a lot of sense in the sense that we cannot have maybe in a dictionary the same word meaning two different things. So definitely we cannot have duplicate members. So we cannot have something like age being duplicated as age. I mean, the key is still age and the value is for instance, 18. Now, when I do this and let me comment this one out, when I do this and run this, we only get one age showing up over here. We only get one age showing up over here. It doesn't matter the number of times I duplicate this. But look at what I'm going to do. If I'm to change age to, for instance, 20 and run this, you do get 20 over here. Now, let's go back to some of the things we've already learned. And this, as we have over here, in terms of this particular duplicate, is almost as if we had the, um, I mean, the previous example of, let's say we have Kwame over here and we have name. And now we are changing this to Kenneth. Clearly, the variable declaration we have on line 11 is overwriting what we have on line 10. And that's exactly what's happening over here. So we definitely cannot have duplicates. If you have duplicates, then there will be an overwriting of that data. So this is not allowed in dictionaries. If we do so, then it defeats the purpose of we having a key value pair because the keys should be unique and the values should also correspond to that particular key. So that will satisfy the definition we have over here. Now, if your guess is as good as mine, this becomes a very good data structure to 
I mean, store very complex data types. So for instance, you see me do something like the keys and all these keys are strings over here. It doesn't really matter. You can have like a key as one and you do a colon and maybe this is one. So this is also a key value pair. We've added this to our student info. And now when I run this, it is still possible. The most important thing is there's a key and there's a value that corresponds or matches up with the key. So now let me just comment, I mean, clear this one because we want our data structure to look like this. And also let me just comment this one out and let me cut our student info and come down to the methods we have in dictionaries. So now let me paste this over here. So I'll do a control V and now let's look at the copy method. And it says it returns a copy of the dictionary. And we've seen this copy method with other data types. So let's say we have new student, sorry, new student info. And I'm going to say the new student info is going to be equal to the student info I have dot copy. So when I do a dot copy over here and call it, now this will return a dictionary. And now I have a copy of this um, student info inside of this new student info. So now look at what I'm going to do. I can do something like this. I can now print out the new student info like I have over here. Now when I save this and run this, I have this new student info. Now I can do certain things on this new student info. And when I say certain things, I can do, for instance, new student info. And I'm going to grab, for instance, the name. And I'm going to do a reassignment. And for instance, the new name is John. So I'm changing Kenneth to John. Now, when I save this and run this, I do get the data over here. This is what I'm printing, the new student info. And because I've done reassignment now, the name is now John, as you can see over here. Now let's see what will happen if I print the original student info. If I'm to print the original student info, and I think I have a typo over here, so I'll save this. And now if I run this, remember the first one we have over here is a new student info because that's exactly what we are printing on line 22. And on line 23, we are printing the original student info. 22 is a new student info. So the new student info has John and the original student info has the name Kenneth over here. So the original student info as we have over here is still maintained. We only have a copy of this and we are mutating or we are changing things in here. So we can have something of this sort as a structure and whenever we get a new student, we just do a mutation of it and we are good to go. Now let's comment everything we have over here and come to the clear method. Remember we have the student info showing up over here. Let me just cut this so that we have it close to our methods over here. So let me do this. And now what I want to do is I want to use a clear method. Now the clear method removes all the elements from the dictionary. So I can do student info dot clear. And this we have seen with other data types. Remember this returns a none. So we can simply print out the student info we have over here. And now when I run this, we get an empty dictionary over here because it has cleared everything. Now this can be a very good candidate. I mean, for the clear method to write some logic that when you click a button, this clear method will be invoked. And for which reason, everything in there will be deleted, something of that sort. This will be a very good candidate. Now let's comment this out over here. And now let's look at the pop method. And it says it removes the element with a specified key. Remember our keys are what we have over here. And these are our values. So now I can do, for instance, student info. And when I do a dot pop, and bring in a parenthesis, it says as you pass in the key, which is a strange and it will, I mean, it's going to return any a number of things over here. And when you click on this to read more, you have this over here. It says that if the key is not found, returns the default if given. Otherwise, raise an error. So now I want to pop the key name. So I just want to get rid of name, basically. Then now if I'm to print 
the student info and run this clearly now name has been taken off we only have email showing up over here as kenneth at student.com then you also have age showing up over here good now let's go back to what we have over here and it says that um when we do the d like the dictionary dot pop we can pass in the key so it removes the specified key and returns a corresponding value if key is not found return the default if given otherwise raise a key error so now if for instance i have passed the key here as names clearly we don't have names showing up over here we don't have names showing up over here so now when i run this this is going to return an error and it is not looking good it says key error names so it definitely tells us that there's a key error we should go back and check our keys but now look over here when i pass in a default so now this now becomes the default and that's what you see over here and the default i can say let me just type in info so now when i run this it doesn't raise that error for me it just prints out what i have here so if you really don't want your code to be breaking you can do some things like this but then the most important thing is you need to know your keys and the way you go about them now talking about knowing your keys there is a method we can use to know our keys and that's what you're going to move on next so let me cut this and let me give a space over here and i'll look at the keys method so i'll paste this over here so we can have a very big dictionary and we may not have the leisure of time counting everything in there trying to know our keys and stuff like that so we can actually use the keys method and this keys method returns a list containing the dictionary's keys and i mean based on the knowledge we have now we know that these are the dictionary keys name email and age but now let's actually check so i can do for instance student info dot keys and i'll bring in a parenthesis over here. and this will return a dict keys it says d dot keys will return a set like object providing a view on these which in this case the dictionary's keys so over here because this is returning a dict keys i can actually print this out or wrap this in a print statement and now when i do this save and run this we get the dict keys over here and currently you can see that we have name we have email and we have age these are the keys we specified for our student info dictionary there are things we can do with this dict keys later on we are going to look at them when we start building our applications and now the last one we have over here is the values method now the values method returns a list containing the dictionary's value so definitely if keys method were given as the keys then the values method would definitely give us the values so now i can do for instance student info dot values and i'll bring in the parenthesis over here, and it says this will return a dict values so i can wrap this up in a print statement or print function now when i save this and run we do have the dict values over here and we have um kenneth kenneth at student.com and we have 18 over here so this is going to be the end of this video in the subsequent videos and chapters we are going to build on some of the knowledge we have gained in here and in other previous videos in building our application now if i'm value in the videos i'm putting out here kindly support my work by subscribing to the cambro tech channel also don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified also share this video with friends and family who will find this content very useful at cambro tech we say learn programming you can do it bye bye and catch you in the next video